I'm rooted here. And it's it's home. Very, very country. We're it's it's a community. We would go out of our way to help anyone. We're just a bunch of old country people is what we are. <laughs> you know, we say yes ma'am and no sir and <laughs> we try to raise our kids right. We work hard, but we play hard too, but we try to take care of our own. But if we don't have the means to do that, how are we supposed to? You know, there's, there's people, there's such good people in this county, but they've been through everything. We're just in a hard situation, in a very hard situation. How can we move forward? We're just sitting here eating our breakfast this morning. Y'all eat breakfast yet? I figure I better use these teeth while I can. I'll be gone here after a while. <laughs> here you go, Robbie. We got a little bit of everything in here. Tuna, uh, stuff like, uh, like, Peaches and stuff. And, and what we'll do is we'll call out numbers one through fifty, and they line up, and then we get the next batch. If you have any questions, my name's Teresa. Oh, nice to meet you. So, you're you're number one. Patient number one. Tuesday. Have you t since Tuesday? You know, when you got a tooth that's infected or something like that, you feel bad all the time. Yeah. I just want to get them pulled and uh, lower uh, plate cleaned, whitened up, and everything. Maybe I'll be a Beyonce or something like that. You know, that's what I want. I crushed my leg, got metal on my leg, got metal on my back, metal on my wrists. My wife, she's got metal on her back. How'd you get that? Which one? <laughs> oh, I was, I was crushed by a bobcat. Oh, man. I'm sorry. I'm not. I'm still alive. My daughter just had a baby, and he's three months old right now. But I said, if it's this hard on us now, what's it going to be like when he gets older?
after throw a chair. Does he want us to come over there? Well, he said he's gonna ride his bicycle over here. All right. <laughs> I don't know what to ask him. Well, why did you start Ram? Well, yeah, you? I know the basics. All right, so this is Laura. Hi, Stan. Hello, Laura. Laura, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, too. I'm Tim. Tim, I think I've interviewed you before. Stan, why did you create Ram? Well, I was asked that question recently by the sixth man to walk on the moon, astronaut Ed Mitchell. And I said, well, it goes back to way in the last century uh, when I was a young cowboy uh, on the Brazilian border. I had a head-on collision with the side of the corral. And I was very badly injured. And uh, the cowboys came running over and they pulled me out from underneath the horse. And one of them said, well, the nearest doctor is 26 days on foot from here through the rainforest. And when I told astronaut Ed Mitchell that question, that, that, uh, that story, he said, well, I was on the moon and I was only three days from the nearest doctor. So for the people uh, that lived in that part of the upper Amazon or even people today here in the United States that cannot afford or have access to healthcare, they might as well be on the moon mm -hmm. for the opportunity that they have. Here, let me help. You go yeah, get I need some bread. Some bread. Delicious. Yeah, let's chili silverware. I don't think it's going to get something deep. Hey, buddy. This is important. I need you to go over there with Michael, okay? I'll take you home in a little bit. I have a lot of immediate needs, but <clears throat> um, the first one that comes to mind is my teeth because I've, I've went so long without uh, dental work, unless it was absolutely necessary. The last, I had to have two teeth pulled because they had cavities so bad that they were breaking. Every time I'd eat something hard, I couldn't, couldn't chew. Well, to be honest, I don't even know if they were even doing anything for me. I don't know if they operate or cut out or, or what. I don't like a dentist, I'll tell you that much. <clears throat> I need a mammogram. Um, I have um, history in my family. I need a mammogram. And I also would like to get my teeth cleaned because I am that's important to me, keeping my teeth taken care of. And um, I want to like to get some checks done on my heart and things like that. Just a regular, just checkup, just to make sure things are going okay. If it weren't for Ram, how would you see a doctor? I don't. I won't. I haven't. <laughs> I was born with very weak teeth, and my mother actually lost all hers at a very young age. And um, I need a lot of work done and it's just too expensive to go to a dentist. Oh, we're probably gonna get there at midnight, mm -hmm. or maybe even earlier, about about 10 to 12, somewhere about yeah. that, so. Why so early? Because they start giving out tickets at 3.30 mm -hmm. in the morning, yeah. and I'm sure there's gonna be people waiting there. I don't wanna be too long, too far back. Good morning. Are you morning. Colonel Williams? I'm Captain Morlock. Okay, you're the one in charge then. I'm, one in charge. I'm Teresa Hicks. Very nice to meet you. Same we appreciate here. you all coming no out here. Not. Thank you so Probably much. Not. Good morning. You folks are up early, aren't you? How many people you got? Three people Three. here? Okay. Oh, goodness. You're going to be tired today. 
We'll line up about 545, okay? okay. All right. Good morning. Tell you what, they're just giving out 500 tickets today. There's going to be a lot of disappointed people. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And there's people you know? out there sleeping on the ground, yeah. you know? Yeah, yeah right up oh, there. He, uh, he's got a moped, and this, la this lady yeah. this lady just went and put a blanket over for us so. Yeah, he was yeah. out there freezing. Me, my, my sister, her boyfriend, my uncle, and my mama, if we don't get in today, we're going to stay all weekend. I'll start to be on that. Could we go ahead and get a ticket because it's the only day we can get dropped off to go? It's, it's according to how people are parked, so we'll be, we'll be right on up there in just a few minutes. Just make sure you're at your car when we get up there, OK? Could we get two tickets now so I wouldn't have to worry about it, please? I'm sorry, but I've, I've got to give them out in the order that people came. Well, we'll be up there in just a few minutes, OK? We're coming. We're, we're, we're coming. We're on our way. We don't have enough. Well, if, if, we, if we run out today, we've got about 800 for tomorrow. We can't come tomorrow. We don't have a ride. Can all I right. not have two tickets now? I'm sorry. I really can't do that because all these people, we gotta, we got to serve them in the order that they showed up. Some of these people have been here since Wednesday night. There you go. Thank you. You're welcome. Honey, everybody here has got the same situation. I, I know, but we're, we're on our way up there, okay? I've got 500 tickets to give out today. Hi there. How many of you are in here? Two of you? Okay. She told me this was her car, and it wasn't. Which one? That, the one that's been following us around. around. Yeah, okay. it wasn't her car. It wasn't I mean, her it car. So she died a life up there about five rows. Okay. And I was told when I first got she here to stay in my car. You see people. No, I gave, I, gave, I, gave, I, gave, I gave this guy a number, and then I went back because this guy said, where's my number? Okay. She said that this was her car. Okay. And so I we'll gave her two tickets. But okay. I, well, yeah. I just, I, I needed you to know what was going on. Are you a licensed professional man? Yes, sir. What's the last name? Dunn. I have been doing free medical care for almost 15 years. I work in triage and I do live in Bristol, Tennessee. And there's a young man named Tommy up there. He'll give you an orientation and tell you what to do. Okay. Right. Okay. Thanks, folks. Appreciate it. We will have a lot of professional people from the Bristol area, but there will be other professionals coming from all over the United States. And there is where you want to work. Do you know if you're going to be doing extractions or fillings? Okay. Uh, this first time doing this, I just signed up. <laughs> okay. Well, we're really happy to have you. Thank you so much for coming. In 2010, we didn't have enough dentists because the dentists were at this national dental convention. They had to close the gate. It may be very, very sad because these people had been parked and waiting and camped out. I got the last one. Are you parked here? No. Oh. Sorry, I thought that was your car. You got the last one, buddy. Last one? That's it. All right, so that'll probably be about 9, 10 o'clock. Okay, great. Okay. Thank you. All right. Are they going to be giving out any more tickets? We will give out more to, uh, tomorrow. tomorrow. We have 800 for tomorrow. Well, yeah. Is there not some way that they can give all the rest of the people that have been sitting here since early last night, like a couple of pieces of paper or something, so that if we leave and come back, we can be the first instead of having to stay here all night? Yeah, we're going to have to look at that. Uh, we'll, I mean, we'll be giving out the tickets at 3, 3.30 tomorrow morning, just like we did this I morning. I mean, there's a lot of people that's been here so since 10 o'clock last night. They can pull down here, We've been in not. here for a long damn time. That's we've not given Those people have been here And I took off block. work to bring my sister to get her teeth worked but on. We I mean, we appreciate what you're doing yeah. and what's going on. Are you the owner of this place? No. <laughs> but we do I'm appreciate it. Are you saying we should leave? Way. No, I'm not saying that you should leave. If, he's saying sit here until they give out the tickets tomorrow morning. Well, he's going to go see if your idea you works. Yeah, I have a family. They usually don't, don't do that. I think we all need to walk down to the officials 
and push the issue that they come to each car. Everybody get back in their car and then give us a piece of paper saying that this is your number, this is your number, so that if we need to leave, we can come back and we still know that we got our spot and we don't have to sit here till tomorrow morning at 3 o'clock. Because we've been here since, you know, they don't even have a car. Why wasn't there somebody parking? In 664 of these operations, we have never failed to start on time. since about four o'clock yesterday afternoon well I have and then she came later on after work but uh, it's been quite a wait you know real, being real patient with it and and they finally got us our tickets about 3 30 this morning so we got a good number so we're, we're waiting to get in there now so what number I got 30 she got 38 and I got 39 what time is it five two start everything at six o'clock that's it Cats and dogs, chickens, pigs, and water buffaloes. Okay, good morning, folks. Very glad to have you here today. Who is here uh, to see the dentist? Please raise your hand if you're here to see the dentist. Okay, who's got number one? Number one. You got it? Show, Show me the number, ticket. please. Okay, go ahead. Go right around. Number, number two. Two. Number three. three. Number four. Eight. Five. Okay, dental and vision. Thank you. Doctor, you can redeem what you need to leave. Okay. Uh, do you need medical history? Yeah, well, you know, what's the mood like out there in the parking lot? What is what? The mood, what's the mood like out there? Oh, it's, it's just not, you know, a lot of people moving around. Just anxious to get in. Yeah, I bet. <laughs> I grew up in Georgia. Just moved to. Uh, what, how old are you, sir? How old? I don't say how old oh, I oh, is. Oh come on, it's for the paperwork. I got it. Seven, seven, seven. Okay, I never would have guessed that. I'm a cook son. Well, actually, I'm uh, 44 now. I've never had a mammogram. Two seven six. So I wanted to try to get that started. Yes. I'll take it right now. I've been issued out. I understand that. Okay. But uh, we spoke to him, right. and he's going to try to find out if the cars that are still out here, <laughs> right. that are first in line, if we leave, we're going to lose our spot because we have children and diabetics and stuff out here that can't that can't sit here right. till three in the morning. Right. And nobody said anything about 500 tickets. Mm. So we need him to come back out here and explain to all of us if he's going to give us something to put on our car or something. Okay. Seventy three. Send to four. Send to eight. Send to nine. Eighty. Okay. Hold him at eighty. Hold him at eighty. Okay. Sorry. 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 Huh. Wow. They ain't called you yet. Before I got on Medicare, if somebody had come and said, you have to have insurance, you have to buy it. Okay, how are we gonna pay for that? 
I mean, people want health care, but they don't want to pay out the wazoo for it. Can't we go to the doctor and pay $30 for a doctor's visit and get our medicine for free? Why can't we do that? Why can't we, you know, pay a copay of, you know, 5 or $10 instead of $210? I have no insurance. No insurance. How long have you looked at insurance? 10 years. You don't go to the doctor. You don't, you don't go to the ER, even in an emergency. It keeps you from getting the help you need. I was born and raised on a farm and taught to take care of yourself. So to allow somebody else to step in that goes against a lot of what, what I was taught. Catch a ride. People help each other, yes. But it's the asking for help that the pride keeps them from doing, keeps me from doing, keeps my husband from doing. Yeah. You know, going to Ram is going to take a little bit out of me. I mean, it's going to take a little bit out of me, but in the long run, I'm trying to see on the other side of it the, that my self-esteem is going to be a little, a whole lot better. Have you had all of your vaccinations? No stroke, heart disease, HIV positive. No. I'm gonna get your pulse, little mister. Can I see your hand? You're warm them up. <laughs> All right, sugar. Hand right through this thing. You get to ride on a cart. Ain't that cool? Oh, God. <laughs> Is that cool or what? We're on the racetrack oh, now, Troy. She has a degenerating disease of, her, of the gums, which is causing her teeth to, to rot and decay. And, you know, by going to this, I'm hopefully that will build her confidence back up. It bothers her. It bothers me. It bothers her. And I hate to say it, I haven't been able to kiss my wife in over a year, you know, and that's, that's pretty hard, man. <laughs> 28 and root tips 30. So I'd like to do that case. This area in Northeast Tennessee has a lot of drug issues. I have not done drugs in my life, never will. But if somebody doesn't know your story, that you just have bad teeth and it's not, they have a preconception of why. We don't have jobs here. We don't have jobs, and the jobs that are available aren't paying living wages. Well, I get out and hustle. I try to do, if I can find an odd job, you know, uh, wrecking leaves. I've got a couple people. Uh, I help with their dogs. There's really nothing around here. You, you can find some work out of town. Uh, that's what I mean to say, I don't have transportation. Unless you have college degrees now, for someone like myself, here I was, overweight, old, and people don't hire. Once you get past 50, 
you're gonna be real lucky to get a job unless you have the sheepskin. And I didn't. I got a lifetime of experience, and I ain't stupid, but I couldn't get a job. Then you've been beaten down to the point where you been told you're not going to do this or you can't do that or you're not going to make it or you home crying because your children are sick. You have to decide whether to buy bread, pay bills, or take them to the doctor. You get pretty upset there. It's pretty upset that you begin to distance yourself away from the outside. I don't make that much working and um, I do the best that I can. I have just got a job as a waitress on, a sun on Sundays about a month ago, so I cannot be without speaking with, you know, without teeth, speaking with customers. Um, so my ultimate goal is to get the full dentures, if not, I want my front tooth fixed and all the ones that are broken off on top, bottom. There's probably eight of them. I'm gonna, I want those gone so that at least the abscesses won't persist. Hang in there with me. Sorry. Are you okay? Here we go. Tim, Tim, you'll feel a lot of pressure. This should not hurt. Okay? Oh my goodness. That's out. Tim, are you okay, honey? One more to go, okay? It's not hurting you? It just scares you? I'm sorry, honey. We're not hurting you. Okay. Sorry. Here we go. One more to go, okay? Again, you're not hurting you, are we? It just takes a lot of pressure to get these things out. Okay, here we go. Bite together. Got them all, okay, honey? You were really good, thank you. Thank you for being so good. Thank you, honey. Thank you. God bless you. Thank you. It was numb it. Wow. Five of them. Five of them. The whole right side that are broke. All oh, of these. Yeah. Took them all, huh? Yeah. Well, you won't have no more abscess in them, huh? Not in that one. Actually, you built the I was hoping to get more out of it than I got out of it. What I wanted was to have them all gone and get the dentures. Did they explain why you couldn't get dentures? They didn't have enough dentists. We're tired of getting our hopes up and things not happening. So we take it day by day and then week by week. When I look at myself in the mirror, I have no pride in myself. I used to be a very outgoing person, and now I'm not. And in order for me to get that back, it's going to take me having more confidence in myself. And until I get this fixed, it's not going to happen. Thank you. 
I wasn't going to my daughter's graduation because of this. Because of the appearance. My appearance. And the doctors around here wanted $500. Mm -hmm. And I've been being unemployed for a depression because of this. And I went out to Jason and Dr. Rocco. Dr. Rocco. Thank y'all so much. You're welcome. You're welcome. Sheila came in. Hi. She had you? a very large, uh, seba probably a sebaceous or some type of a cyst just in the corner of her eye. Probably this large. Can you take a picture of Jason and I with uh, our best friend here? I will. Just tell me what I'm doing. What I set up on? What you doing is you're pushing it. In my own office, I, I just want to do something like that because, you know, you worry about getting sued. So I said, you know, if you're willing to, you know, realize that you might have a little scar from where the decision was, we will do it. She started crying and she was all, so uh, we, uh, we we took it out. I don't have to cover it up. You don't have to cover it up anymore. You don't have to anymore. cover it up. You're Thank so used you. to covering so, it up. So used to it. Show the world. Daddy, I'm ready. Hey, they took it off. I'm in, I'm in extreme pain, but yeah, it, it looks a lot better. Yeah, it's a, it was a cyst. Yeah, and the doctors are not from around here, Dad. No, they're from uh, New York, Rhode Island. Did you have any asthma as a child? Yeah. The... Uh, do you have any animals in your home? We're in a geographic area where lung disease is very prevalent. Lung cancer, emphysema, COPD, uh, bronchitis, asthma, coal workers, pneumoconiosis. With this tractor trailer, I've been working with Remote Area Medical for 12 years. The, the combination of driving a tractor trailer and also being the doctor creates some humorous situations. I had a patient and his wife who came for an x-ray, but her husband wouldn't take his shirt off. And the wife, she explained to me, she said, my husband watched you back this tractor trailer in here, and he said, you have to be a real truck driver. There's no way you're a doctor. He's not taking his shirt off. Uh, oh, just like that? Oh, real still. Taking a deep breath. Blow it out. Hold it out. Taking another deep breath. Hold your breath and breathe. We'd come over here at 2 o'clock this morning, come over here for one of my friends to get his teeth pulled out. And we got back over here and they said we're going to have to sit and wait until 3.30 in the morning to get another number for tomorrow. So they said the health was, you know, taking patience. So many of them both in here. <laughs> I hope he got better news than I've got. We're looking at this spot on your x-ray. Uh -huh. Are you a smoking person? Yeah. Yeah. No? I did. Have you been told in the past that you had spots on your x-ray? Mm -hmm. I never had an x-ray. Never had an x-ray? No? So you live in the town of Big Stone Gap? Yeah. yeah. What? How old were you when you started smoking? 18. So how many cigarettes do you smoke a day? Uh, that depends on what kind of impact I can have. Uh, you see what I'm talking about? Yeah. Which ain't good. Well, everybody can have some little spots on their x-ray, and so, you know, things like this can be scar tissue. But this one is big enough to catch your eye, and when you blow it up, it's kind of got shaggy borders. We're trying to 
not have you be alarmed about it, but you do you do see what it is, and it is there, and it is your x-ray, and you are the smoking person, and so we have to explain that to you and arrange some follow-up and see what it is. And you can what it is, what it is. I mean, you can't fight it. The Lord take care of it, or it'll take care of itself, or you gotta take care of it. Well, well, we'll take care of you. Okay, well, we'll take care of you. 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 We'
Great. I'm seeing a lot more attitudes now that it's got warm, people outside. They're like, look, I'm in my pajamas. I done slept in my car. Nobody's telling me nothing. This is taking like twice as long as I thought, you so know. Is, is, are you feeling that? No, I'm good. E D R C Z P. Okay. All right, now I'm going to have you do the other eye. Just cover your right eye. Yeah, we're jacked on this one. <laughs> People have to understand that when you wind up do going to a place like Ram, you have to exercise. You have to exercise patience. These people are volunteering their time to help us out. The least we can do is be patient. I'm looking forward to over eighteen thousand dollars worth of procedure tomorrow. If they give it to me, I am going. I'm. I, I'm. It's going to save my life. Look how fat I am. <laughs> oh, God. You're not fat. My, my girth is a result of diabetes because of my teeth. Get rid of the teeth, I get rid of the diabetes, and I'm wind up healthier. And my wife will have something to look at for a change. <laughs> well, it's true. <laughs> that nobody on the front row, nobody on the second row will get to go in. But the people on the wall, there was like 10 of us. They walk in, they say, you two, I'm the next chair. You already had your teeth cleaned today. You have to come back and get a number. I will get a loan before I get a number to get my own glasses. I will rock the bifocals I've got. You're gonna be anyway, but you're not gonna get a No, because I'm gonna sit with them, I'm gonna be their driver, and I'm gonna be in the car, posted up, covered up, head covered up, knocked out till they done. All right, that's what's up. That's that good, good, that brand new. Brand new. Uh-oh, what happened to him? I've been waiting on one company to get me in for two and a half years, and luckily I'm glad they come back, and I was able to get some eyeglasses where I can actually see now. And I was tickled to death. And I think his name's Stan, and I tried my hardest yesterday, man, to actually meet that man and shake that man's hand for something he actually done for somebody that he don't even know. And I mean, I'm tickled to death. And now that I finally get to get a tooth pulled out that's been bugging me for years, it's time to go. It's built just like a real car. Seen it out there on the gravel, it's crazy. <laughs> Now I gotta go get it. That's what you get. Hey, Josh, run and get it. Hell no. <laughs> Aren't you too lazy? I'm really excited. Are you excited about the caverns? Yeah. It'll be about chest level with you, so you'd actually have to crawl through this hole with your tail. How many patients we saw and everything, and she was like, really, really that much? I don't think she realized. You know, daily grind like this day, you just, you just kind of, it feels like work. You know, after a while, but when you come here, it never. Hey, we're sure good. We're playing some cards. Hey, you gave me a pretty good name.
They got a thousand tickets today. Last get... night was five hundred. They're oh. not open until about. Well, they're open at six, but yeah. he said it'll probably be around seven thirty. Yeah. I got here about eight o'clock last night. Stayed till about it was six twenty-eight, and they gave out the last ticket right in front of my car. So I got back here at six o'clock, parked my car, went to a friend's house for a little while, ate dinner, got dropped back off at one something, and got my ticket tonight. <laughs> what, what's your number? My, my, my number is 397. I worked at McDonald's for nine hours. I've had two hours sleep since Thursday night. This afternoon, I will just die. I gotta be at McDonald's at eight in the morning. I'm excited about getting to get glasses today because I've been squinting and I'm getting wrinkled. From squinting? From squinting, so I'm gonna try to get glasses. I got glasses like seven years ago and I had good insurance, but now I have no insurance and I can't afford them. And I know it don't seem like much. You can go to Walmart for $150 and get them, but it'd take me three weeks or a month to come up with that pay. Morning, Teresa, how you doing? I'm doing just fine out here, how are you? I'm doing great, how many numbers are you giving out? Um, I am about to give out number 504, which is where we stopped yesterday. 504 right now, plus maybe 80 more cars. All right, we'll, we'll keep you posted. Great, thank you, Teresa. Nine minutes to go. We always start on time. There are a number of people that we couldn't see yesterday that we signed their paper, which would have been a pink paper for dentistry or a blue paper for vision. All That's pink right. and all blue papers come over to where you hear my voice. 24. 25. Number 25. I wish all of the people who make decisions could come down and be at the racetrack this weekend to see what the consequences of some of their decisions have been. going to take an ear mod impression that probably you had before okay okay um, I'm going to put do one ear at the time All right. okay so what I'm going to do I'm going to put this mm -hmm. in your ear yeah. okay you may cough or you may sneeze mm -hmm. okay here's this cold stuff coming mm -hmm. okay it's going to be cold there we go here we go mm -hmm. Hello. How are you, sir? Okay. My name's James. I'm one of the med students working with the group. How are you doing today? Well, I'm supposed to go get glasses, but it's going to be over until I'm going to go by pressure. Okay. 220 over 120. They don't... Okay. Recheck 190 over 120. I'm probably going to check it again. That's okay? Yeah. Are you feeling all right? Yeah. Okay. Any headaches? Not right now, yeah. Okay. Do you know of having high blood pressure in the past, or is it the first time you've heard about it? Right. Okay. <laughs> Okay, let your arm relax, and I'm going to go ahead and start it, but I'm going to keep talking to you so that we can distract you, too. Make sure it's a good reading. I'm going to take it out, okay? Okay.
Perfect. Hey, I can hear it now. There it is. A little bit of wax came out. That's good. Yeah. Looks good, okay? Hmm. Whew. Okay, I'm gonna redo that. Okay? Fine. You got a doctor? No. You don't. We need to find you one. You got blood pressure issues. Yeah, so it's real important that we figure out uh, how to get that taken care of. You know, blood pressure a long time, you know, you gotta see the doctor pretty regular, pretty regular. You're 61 years old? Yeah. So you kind of fall between the cracks. So how long has it been since you had the uh, doctor's visit? Since I was a teenager. Teenager? How'd you manage to avoid it that long? <laughs> I thought I was healthy. Deep breath there. Um, are you the lady I give my thing to for vision? No, I will look at it, yep. Okay. Then, then we'll... She said, go to Concrete Pole. Yep. <laughs> I was okay. like, okay. All right, and now what we want to do is put you in line so that okay. you can go down on that golf cart and get to vision. Okay, so, so just go yeah, over just go right over there. Thank you. <laughs> I can't wait to get vices. I've been oh, yeah? going like this. You want to be able to see? Yes. <laughs> Sounds like a good idea. Right. I think they're waiting for you. Here Thank you. Go. you. Hey, buddy. I was with you yesterday. Oh, yeah. Bye, guys. Bye, guys. Bye, guys. Bye, guys. Eyes wide open. I know it's bright. You're doing great. You think I'm going blind? <laughs> Do you wear glasses? All oh, right. You're having trouble seeing distance. Yes. Do you drive? Oh yeah. Did you pass your drivers at the motor vehicles? Um. Yeah. I, I can see when I drive. I just can't see at night. We see people here with the entire gamut of visual conditions that that really need to get the kind of attention. Otherwise, they just couldn't even function well. I mean, think about trying to get back to work. If you can't see, you can't do that. Can you make out those? Mm, it's okay to guess. A P S O E. G. Okay. <laughs> All right. Let me write this down. So no glasses, right? Oh, that's with glasses. Oh. <laughs> the thing that weighs on me the most is we have people in desperate need within our borders. Remote area medicine, <laughs> we don't have to go too remote. What do you think of these? Are they too little? I'll tell you. No, I don't think so, but one of these folks here, oh, she has much better taste than I do. <laughs> I want the ones that I have to wear all the time to look good on my face because... I want to let you walk away with glasses. Okay. 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 You going to wrap with that one? Sure. Those are better. Those look good. Look, nice but, color, too. They're better. They're better, <laughs> better. Much better. Size. That was funny. You said, I won't let you no. walk out here with those on. <laughs> With the setup we got, in a perfect condition, you can do about 280 or so glasses a day out of the truck. The very first clinic I did, I didn't know the process. I never had any a clue what it took to make glasses. I was a whitewater raft guide and kayak instructor. This is where she gets to check them and make sure I did the job correctly. We've always worked together, which has been fun. Um, it, it adds to the, to the spice of life, that's for sure. <laughs> My wife, she's the one that kind of said, hey, you know, this is cool, you need to, to do this. This May will be 39 years we've been married. The very first time we met, I just turned 16. We went out on the first date, and when I took her home, I said, I, I want to marry you. And uh, she said, yeah. I may have to, I'm going to have to pop it back out. It's not. You did it? Yep. Wow. <laughs> When uh, when you're there and somebody comes in and just out of the blue, people figure out this is where their glasses come from. They'll knock on the door and say, you know, thanks, uh, I can see. 
that I haven't been able to see for years. Or the kid that, that comes and says, I'm 14 years old, and until today, I didn't know what a leaf looked like. Um, then that gets you. Um, it gets you hard. But it makes a difference. It's better than anything that you can do. Can I help you? Yeah. 228. I was the remake. They heard about how that I was always next after I sat five hours and I was actually next. When I came in, the lady over there, she hooked me up. She didn't even make me sit through the whole line or anything. She said, you're my yesterday lady. She remembered me by name and by face. That meant a whole lot considering that there's thousands of people that's already come through here, and she really knew who I was. Do you want to yeah, take a look at it? Yeah, I do. Well, she was right. I can pull these off. You right, You wore the right color today for them. <laughs> I did. <laughs> you said I could probably pull these <laughs> yeah, off. Yeah, you got it. You got it going on. I'm okay. Excited. Have a great Thanks. day. We're in good health. I will. Well, look at you. Look, look, I got yes. some, some eyes on now. <laughs> she heard me raise Kane yesterday. Yeah. She's like, they asked the wrong one when they asked you. I was like, yep. Because if they wanted it in detail, they got they it. They got it. <laughs> Down to the T, they got it. <laughs> How you doing, buddy? Doing great, you? Uh, you know, I think this is a great thing that they do. For the, uh, are you from this area? Yes, sir. Uh, they, when I go, they travel all over the United States. It's an organization, don't they? They do. That's they certainly do. I know they do them up in the I was born premature. What happened is that when they put me in the incubator, instead of regulating the oxygen level, they shot it up to about 90% pure oxygen. It burst the blood vessels in my eyes. Are you legally blind? Yes. I am. Honey, I can look at you, and I can't even see the color of your eyes or what's your eyes. That's the truth. Just kind of take a look just straight ahead out to where those lights are down there. With both, I keep them both open. There's so much matter. scar tissue there that there's nothing can be done right now. I actually don't know of any technology, including the computer chips. And the dental's on the other side, so. Okay, yeah, thank you. Elevator. My people were originally from these little mountains around here. My mother, she got ill. She passed away in 2003. And about uh, two months after that, we didn't even know my wife had cancer. And she passed away. It was bad enough to lose my mother, honey. But when I lost my wife, dude, it friggin' blew me away. <laughs> Did they just send you over here? No, I'll come over here on my own. All right, let's, look, let's get you I'll come you up seated. here and get my tea pulled. If I don't get my tea pulled today, they're going to be able to go fight over this. Uh-oh. I met her when I was playing music in Charlottesville. She came up to the stage, and she pointed at me. I was up on the drums. She said, who are you? I said, my name's Glenn. She said, you don't know it, boy, but you're going to be my husband before I die. And I said, what? She, uh... Last thing she said, she said, I don't want you to be alone for the rest of your life. She said, I love you, boy. And then she took a deep breath and told her daughter she loved her and her grandkids, and she was gone. And you know, what do you do? Okay. All right, just easy, close together for me. Okay. You a surgeon, a dental surgeon? No. Uh, all I do is the prosthetics. Yes, um, so uh, you have to, those extractions need to be done by a surgeon here. What I would do is the upper first. I mean, there, there's no reason okay. these, these lowers are not. Uh, yeah, I, I know you would, but what, uh, what I'm saying is uh, I know that we can do one. We're going to do that upper, the impression on the upper and the upper denture. Uh-uh, uh-uh, uh-huh. Oh, my God. Those are all yours. They were. 
I went through a lot of bad, bad pain over my teeth. It got really bad for about a year. I mean, really, really bad. I actually poured a couple of them myself, which was quite a pain, you know. You don't get to a certain point, you don't have a lot of options. You know, you do what you gotta do. How'd you pour out yourself? With power pliers. Just grab a hold and pull real quick. After about six months of bad teeth, you realize a smile really ain't that important. They can look at my eyes, <laughs> you know? I'm shocked. My patients told me they had been waiting outside for two days. There were people who cried after I finished working on them, and that made me cry out. You don't get that in everyday dentistry. We are human too, we feel it, we feel it, baby. Open up, open up. Lift your tongue for me. Lift it up all the way to the roof of your mouth. Perfect. Now move your tongue left and right for me. Great. Okay. All right. Yummy. Now we gotta get out of that. Boy, that's a nice one. That stuff tastes nice. Are you mad at me? No. Good. Can I ask you a question while you're working? You can. Okay, I have a sweet mom and dad, mom and son out here who have, they've hitched a ride from Kingsport to the event this morning, right early, and they have just some repairs. But I told Kevin that they could, I asked Kevin Martin if they could drop these off at his place and maybe you pick them up there at some point in time and, and I'll pay for the repairs. Not necessary to do. I'll take care of that. Okay. Is that okay? Yeah, it is. That'll Thank work. you. If that'll work out fine for them. Thank you. Thank you. Be more facilitating like that. Much better. Hey, Doug, you got an apprentice. <laughs> we have a new apprentice today. Walked by the room here and saw the dentures being made and recognized some of the tools they were using from, I have some training as a jeweler. And so I decided to sit and watch for a little while and before long I found myself making dentures. I like to do jewelry too, so we have a common thread. I get to do jewelry every once in a while and... I get to do teeth every once in a while now. <laughs> Glenn, we have his upper right there, and this is his lower, and we're waiting for uh, one of the young doctors to come and uh, check his bite and see uh, if we've been successful. Uh, he said that he was ready to eat a steak, so we have to see if that's where we are. Is it hurting? Okay. Okay. Well, as long as it's not hurting, that's the main concern. All right. There you go. How's that doing? It'll hit the back of those teeth. But it'll take some getting used to, but you'll get used to it. It looks good. You want to smile? smile? Oh, yay! Wait, who? Where? Right here, right here. Oh, there's my brother. Yay! Yes. Good looking teeth. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. God You're bless welcome. You. Bless you. They look good. Aww. They look so good. Smile, smile for the Look at those teeth. I know when I get home by myself and get some rest, I'm going to look up to the Heavenly Father above and say, thank you. It was worth every minute. And that's the truth. How did it go in there? Can you show us the top? Yeah. Yeah. I can't feel it, so. Have I got my lip? And children, brush your teeth. Ha, 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 ha.
So what are you gonna do after you leave here? Where are you going? Uh, I'm going to my friend's house. What are you gonna go there for? Uh, just cause that's where I go. Can you tell us about uh, how you're gonna take care of the pain? Uh, probably take treat with Lord's have. <laughs> you want, you know, I ain't, ain't no point in talking about it when you're gonna tell the truth, right? Street. Well, that's gonna look great. My mom's gonna love that, ain't she? Yeah, she It was very painful, but Graham came and write prescriptions from pain medication. Everyone I rode with and everyone that I knew or that I'd seen there, they went and got uh, what they needed for their pain. I'm a criminal now because I can't afford to go to the dentist, but I can afford to go get something for five or ten dollars to help me out for the day. This is my friend Dinah's. Isn't she beautiful? Yes. For her age? Well, not for, for her, her age. age. Thank you. And Sadie. See, this I is. Have so many wonderful friends. This is my neighborhood. This is our neighbor, Jerry. This is hey, Jerry. Hey. And we're he. We're all just like a big family. He's injured too, like Diana. We're all injured. We're all crippled, yeah. <laughs> but this is Subutech. And one of those, instead of. You know, uh, having to buy so much, I just take this, and it's it's a good pain pill. It's like I, it just has a little bit of opiate in it. So I don't pain. use a lot of I don't use use a lot of drugs like that really. And you're you're supposed to put it underneath your tongue, but it don't hit as quick. So I hope better not do that. Now my hip's going out, so. Come in. <laughs> there we go. There you go. 
Is there anybody up here who does not have a ticket? See the guest standing right over there? Right over and get with that guy right there. Thank you. Thank you. Patients will always be there. The big question is, are you going to be able to see all of them? We've cut back in places like Guatemala and Honduras and Dominican Republic, Africa, simply because we're overwhelmed with the need here. Welcome to America. sat in line, you sat with your mother or your father, or you couldn't get what you needed. You might be from a small town, you might be someone who didn't get to go to the doctor, but something in your past has touched your heartstrings and brings you very close to the people who are sitting in the chairs waiting for the help. We're all looking in life for what's real. There's a lot of fake stuff out there. These patients are real. Their needs are real. It's a reminder of the people in America who have no access to the system. Come over here. Hey. 